Well, good Wednesday morning, everybody. It is June 30th, 2021, and uh, we are continuing working our way through the 23rd chapter of the book of Acts. Um, today, we're going to look at verses 12 to 22. Is uh, It's the plot to kill Paul, and they're talking about a conspiracy here among the Jews um, to rid themselves of Paul. Um, so, Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Remember, Paul's not and not been arrested, but he's being held by the by the Tribune um, for his own protection. Is the way it, the way it seems um, because the Jews are wanting to kill him, and now they're get, trying going to try to get more serious here today. Uh, so let's look at verses twelve to twenty two in Acts twenty three. In the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. They were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. <coughs> now then, you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case, and we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush, so he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune, and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside privately, and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to ask you you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though, they are, as though they are going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they have killed him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have for informed me of this. Okay, so this is Paul's nephew has uh, had gone and reported this to the tribune as to this plan. Somehow or another, he, through his connections with the Pharisees, I'm suspecting, because Paul was a Pharisee. Uh, and we don't know anything more about this nephew than this. We don't even know his name. But he has sounded the alarm with the tribune, and the plan is going to go at this point. Um, but what we have here is an interesting thing. I mean, we talk about conspiracies in this day and age. Um, we act like they don't exist. Some do exist. Some are dreamt up. Some are real. We just don't know until after the fact. Sometimes we never know. Um, but here we know there is a conspiracy. Behind the scenes, they are planning secretly. That's what a conspiracy would mean, secret planning. Um, they are planning to do away with Paul. Then they want to kill him. Um, here we have an interesting thing where uh, <laughs> by taking an oath to God, they are going to do what is prohibited by the commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit murder. Uh, and murdering Paul. Uh, they feel that, that the greater good is served by, by disobeying that commandment. Now, this is not the first time that's, that's, that's happened here in the scripture. Obviously, with Jesus, they felt the greater good was, was met by having him killed. Thou shalt not kill. And same with Stephen, thou shalt not kill. And Paul was, in fact, Paul even bought into that, that one, remember? So uh, Paul's not immune to that, or wasn't previously immune to that kind of justifying one's actions, uh, thinking we can suspend that. Uh, we see that today, well, I'm not going to get political, but we we're seeing this suspension of, of, of beliefs and, and, and such uh, to be expedient. We shouldn't really do that. Anytime you sell short, for one thing, you just make it easier. For, again, once you let, well, okay, one little murder is okay. Well, what's wrong with two? We already did one, or three, and whatever. Um, you need to be careful with that. Very careful with that. And murder is an extreme case, but there's other things, and I won't go into that this morning. But these men have taken an oath, and they have vowed not to eat nor drink. They kill Paul, which brings up the wondering, huh? Did they starve to death, or did they die of dehydration uh, because they didn't kill Paul? He lives for a few more years. But here God is using their evil intent uh, to get Paul to, to, uh, 
talk to the higher officials. He's going to be working his way up and talking to other people. And so it's, it, give, it avails him to these people that he probably wouldn't have been able to speak to otherwise. And so he is going on to Rome. Um, one thing is brought to mind in the study of this all or in contemplating this all, uh, some of the verses in Proverbs 12. Just a few excerpts. Um, the Lord is pleased with a good person, but he will punish anyone who plans evil. Doing evil brings no safety at all, but a good person has safety and security. And the plans that good people make are fair, but the advice of the wicked will trick you. The wicked talk about killing people, but the words of good people will save them. Wicked people die, they are no more, but a good person's family continues. Paul's lineage, if you will, his spiritual lineage, the work he's done for Christ, exists to this day, continues. Now, granted, Judaism is still around, but the lineage of the high priest is long since gone. The Sadducees disappeared into history. There is only the Pharisees left. Um, so those that were that were, were laying the approval on this act, not necessarily some of the Pharisees were involved in the plotting of it, but the Sadducees are the ones that are putting God's blessing on it, supposedly God's blessing. I can't bless something that's immoral. Remember that in today's age as well. Um, they are no more. And Paul's lineage, Christianity, this, this that we're doing today, what we're talking about here, Christ's love for all, that exists to this day. God made sure that was sure of that. So that's where we're at, uh, going through to the 22nd verse of chapter 23 in the book of Acts. And we will come back tomorrow and talk about it more. So we'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.